hello everyone uh, this is niaz moshe software engineer at appscode uh, i'm one of the developers of kfdb so today uh, our webinar is about uh, provision and manage microsoft sql server instances on kubernetes using kubedb now uh, so in 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 our last uh, in our last uh, uh, release uh, 427 release um, uh, release we have added support for microsoft sql server users can now provision and manage microsoft sql server on any private or public cloud environment so let's see uh, the table of contents um, that we will we will discuss today uh, so uh, we'll uh, we'll see like what is sql server and uh, and uh, some of the key features of uh, Microsoft SQL Server, and we will see how uh, QDB provision Microsoft SQL Server, and and then we will see some features and specifications um, uh, in QDB for SQL Server provisioning, and and then uh, I will uh, then uh, we will see a live demo on how to provision. Uh, how to use uh, kubedb to provision microsoft sql server on your kubernetes cl cluster and then uh, we'll have a question answer session so uh, let's start so microsoft sql server uh, is a powerful and widely used relational database management system developed by microsoft which is initially uh, released in 1989 it has evolved over the years to become one of the most popular database systems for businesses of all size. So SQL Server is known for its robust performance, security, and ease of use. So uh, it also supports a uh, it supports a wide variety of transaction processing, business intelligence, and data analy analytics ap applications in corporate IT environment. So SQL Server. Uh, provides a powerful and scalable RDMS platform for storing, querying, and managing relational data. So, Transact SQL. Uh, uh, SQL Server uses trans uh, Transact SQL, which is uh, known as TSQL, uh, an extension of SQL that adds for procedural programming elements such as loops, conditional statements, and error handling uh, to the standard SQL language. So making it highly versatile for database deployment, database development. So uh, it supports uh, high availability. Uh, always and is a suite of high availability and digest recovery uh, features in SQL Server. Uh, so SQL Server offers various high availability features such as always on availability groups to ensure data availability and minimize downtime. So uh, SQL Server supports horizontal and vertical scalability options to handle growing uh, workloads and data volumes. So it can uh, scale from uh, small uh, single server deployments to large scale enterprise deployments. Uh, for the security, SQL Server provides robust security features to protect data from unauthorized access and ensure compliance with regulatory uh, requirements. Features include encryption, authentication, authorization, and auditing capabilities. So SQL Server is known for its industry-leading performance. Uh, it also uh, it also has features like business intelligence. Uh, so SQL Server uh, integrates with Microsoft's BI stack, including uh, tools like SQL Server Analysis Services, Reporting Services, Integration Services enabling organizations to build comprehensive BI solutions. So uh, it, it has also features uh, uh, like uh, advanced analytics. Uh, SQL Server provides support for advanced uh, analytics and machine learning for so integration with R and Python, allowing users to build uh, predictive models and perform data analysis directly within database. So it has uh, in-memory optimizations and uh, integration services um, uh, uh, as well. So uh, let's see uh, some of the uh, use cases of Microsoft SQL Server. So it is uh, ideal for mission-critical workloads and data insights. 
SQL Server is commonly used for large-scale business applications such as ERP systems, CRM, and financial management. So it's suitable for uh, it's suitable for uh, building data warehouses, handling large volume of historical data. Um, it can be um, used uh, for web applications, um, a content management system, and e-commerce platforms as well. SQL Server supports uh, uh, reporting analytics and data visualizations, uh, visualization for informed decision making. So now uh, let's see how QDB provision uh, Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, so this diagram uh, shows uh, a basic uh, overview of how uh, QDB operator actually provision uh, Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, in Kubernetes cluster. So first, uh, user have to create a custom resource, uh, Microsoft SQL Server custom resource in their cluster. And then if QDB is installed uh, in their cluster, then uh, uh, QDB uh, provisioner operator uh, always uh, watches for uh, the custom resource. When uh, Microsoft SQL Server custom resource is created, then provision, uh, QDB provisioner operator will create necessary resources to provision your database clusters. You, uh, your database cluster, uh, uh, the, the resources like uh, pet sets, PBCs, uh, secrets, services, and app binding. So uh, PBC will hold your uh, uh, data uh, for persistency. Uh, the pet set uh, is also known as stateful set 2.0, uh, a unique feature for cloud cost uh, minimization. The pet set feature is perfectly suitable for running database ports on different types of node pools. So you can think of it as a smart stateful set. Uh, you can read our documentation for details. So pet set uh, operator actually will be responsible for creating ports for your database cluster. Um, and then um, if you need to delete your uh, database cluster, we have a uh, different uh, termination policy um, support. Like if you uh, want to re uh, remove any accidental deletion, you can use uh, termination policy, do not terminate, uh, so that uh, you, you can't delete uh, your custom resource. So if you apply, if you try to delete, then uh, in, uh, the deletion operation will be rejected by the operator. And then others termination policy like uh, you can use halt. Um, uh, then if you delete your custom resource, um, then secrets and PBCs will be uh, in your cluster will not be deleted, and uh, these uh, uh, PBCs and secrets will be used to, to recreate your SQL Server again if you apply your custom um, uh, your custom resource again. So then uh, if you use the termination policy delete, then uh, PVC will be deleted, uh, but the secrets uh, and the snapshot can be used to initialize uh, your uh, Microsoft SQL Server cluster again. So if you use wipe, wipe out, then no traces of database resources will be kept in the cluster. So uh, your data will be lost. Uh, okay, you can use wipe out for testing purpose. Now, Let's see uh, features and specifications in QDB to you uh, for Microsoft SQL Server. So we have uh, authentication and customizable health checker feature. Um, so in customizable health checker, um, you can uh, provide interval between each health check iteration and the timeout of health check iteration, number of consecutive, uh, consecutive failures to mark the database as not ready. And if you uh, want to disable database right check, you can uh, provide that as well. Uh, by default, QDB performs right check. Uh, so we also support multiple termination strategy that uh, I have already discussed, like halt, delete, uh, wipe out, and do not terminate. Uh, we have default security context support. Uh, so the database ports will be run, containers will be run, uh, will run as non root by default, non root user. And uh, we have persistent volumes. Uh, you can uh, you can uh, use persistent volumes or use ephemeral storage type. Um, so we have both support, and we have uh, pod disruption budget and pet set support as well for SQL Server. 
So we have uh, two different modes uh, in um, uh, SQL Server. Uh, so user can uh, user can utilize SQL Server's high availability features by deploying instances in availability group mode. So and uh, QDB leverages the raft consensus algorithm for cluster coordination, enabling uh, automatic leader election and failover decisions. So and we have also Quorum support enabled. So Quorum support ensures the reliability and fault tolerance of your SQL Server deployments. And uh, you can also deploy SQL Server instance in a standalone mode for simple single node configuration. Now uh, let's jump into the live demo. So first, uh, you have to uh, create a Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, uh, you need to, uh, and uh, the kubectl command line tool must be configured to communicate with your cluster. So uh, where I am using a client kind cluster for this demo purpose. For kubedb installation, um, you can install it by using this uh, help helm, helm command uh, from helm chart shown here. And if you are not using kubedb right now, you can uh, get a license uh, for 30 days trial period. You can check out our website kubedb.com for more details. Now let's see sample YAML, some sample YAML uh, of uh, Microsoft SQL Server custom resource. So this is a uh, YAML for standalone mode. If you want to create a standalone SQL Server, then uh, you can apply YAML like this. Uh, like any other uh, uh, any other resource in Kubernetes, we, you, uh, this resource has API version kind, metadata, and spec field. Uh, in the API, uh, uh, you have to provide kubernetes.com slash beyond alpha uh, and kind is MS SQL server and in metadata section you have to you can provide uh, you have to provide the name of the uh, resource uh, here I uh, put it as uh, Microsoft MS SQL server standalone and the name is space where you want to deploy this resource and in the version uh, uh, we have started uh, uh, with the latest version uh, 2022 CU 12 and uh, in the replica section uh, it's uh, uh, for standalone mode you, you you have to provide one always you can skip it give uh, to be operator will default will put the default one here and storage type uh, it's also optional you can uh, the default is durable which means uh, you need persistent storage uh, so keep to be operator will create pvc for uh, storing your data and in the storage section you have to uh, provide the uh, uh, storage details uh, like the amount of memory you need to uh, need uh, in your disk to store your data and the storage class uh, in my case uh, it is not standard and the termination policy that you uh, want you can keep it is, as do not terminate if you want to uh, if you don't want any accidental deletion. Um, now, let's see uh, a sample YAML for uh, SQL Server cluster. So for this, uh, API version kind method, uh, everything is same. Uh, you have to provide the name. Uh, so here, uh, I kept this uh, MS SQL Server AG, and I will apply this in demo name space. And the version is same, uh, and the replica, I am uh, creating a cluster uh, of three uh, replicas uh, for this demo. Okay, in the spec section, uh, uh, in the topology uh, field, you have, uh, you have to provide the mode. In this case, uh, the mode is availability group, and uh, availability group uh, section, you have to provide the necessary, uh, like the databases you need, uh, so you have to be, uh, you have to provide a list of database that you want in your uh, availability group. The QBB uh, operator uh, will add this, create this database, and add this to the availability group uh, for you. You don't have to create and add uh, these databases manually in your availability group. So you just have to keep this. Uh, uh, you you just have to provide the list of databases that you want. You can also update this the list as well. 
and uh, for internal authentication of uh, availability group replicas you have to provide a uh, issuer uh, which will use to uh, issue the certificate that will be used in the in, uh, internal authentication of the endpoints of availability group replicas so and uh, storage type is durable and storage configuration is same i am okay and let's see uh, the live demo now so this is uh, my current cluster uh, and that i will use it for demo purpose and i have installed kubedb already so the, these are the this is the, these are the ports that kubedb uh, after installing your kubedb you will get and uh, now uh, first uh, let's uh, let's create uh, the standalone sql server first and see how kubedb actually provision this so So I have applied this CML, MSSQL Server Standalone, which uh, I have shown already in the slide. So the one replica is provided. Now you can see that the database is in provisioning state. Give to be operator already created the necessary services, secret, persistent volume, and the port and the pet set. Uh, for the for provisioning this database and you can see that uh, port is running and after some health checks uh, if database is ready for accepting connections then uh, the database status will be ready let's uh, connect to this port and for uh, the authentication if you if you can provide your uh, custom authentication secret uh, with your custom, uh, with your uh, username and password and a user uh, have to be essay uh, in this case and the password you can provide as you don't yeah as i don't have provided any uh, uh, custom authentication secret mm, the qdb operator has created uh, one for me which is mssco server standalone auth and I can see the uh, data which is kept in this secret for authentication purpose. So let's see the username and password. So this is the username and this is the password. Uh, I randomly generated password uh, is used here. Let's connect with this password. Yeah, we have connected and uh, the database status is ready. So the, the, the database is ready for accepting connections. Let's create, let's see some the default databases. Pages, okay. So these are the default databases and uh, the kubedb system database is created uh, from the health check. Uh, okay, now let's create a sample database. Test. Okay, this database is created. Okay, so let's use this database and create a sample table to see that our database is storing our data for persi persistent purpose. So I have inserted, uh, so I have inserted two rows in my uh, data table. So let's delete this database now. Uh, 
the termination policy is halt, so our PPC will not be deleted. So now let's delete this database to see if our data kept persistent or not. I have deleted this resource and pod is being deleted and the secret and persistent volume volume is not being deleted as uh, the termination policy is halt. So let's wait, uh, wait for pod being deleted. Okay, now Let's create this database again now uh, with the uh, existing PBC and secret and see that our data is available or not. Okay, so maybe operator. I started provisioning this database. Let's connect to the pod with previous authentication details. So our database is not ready yet. Uh, Status will be ready when uh, yeah it's already ready. So this database is wait uh, available for accepting connections. Okay, so we have connected with our previous um, authentication details, and let's see our database is available or not. Yeah, we can we can see that uh, this database is available. Let's use this database and see our data from our data table yeah so we can see that uh, data is persistent on the disk so you can we can use pbc for that yeah now uh, the main part uh, we we'll create a availability group cluster and see how it to be actually provision uh sql server availability group cluster and uh, how actually failover and everything works so let's delete this standalone let's first use wipeout so that it deletes everything okay so termination policy is wipeout now let's delete this Okay, so database is deleted and uh, as well the uh, secret PBC is also being deleted. Now uh, let's create the availability group cluster with uh, with the shown uh, YAML. Let's see again. So this is the YAML that I will create now for creating uh, MS SQL Server availability group with three replicas for uh, with the version. 2022 uh, in demo name space and I want to uh, keep uh, AZDB 1 and 2 uh, for in my availability group so these two databases uh, will be uh, in the and for internal authentication I have to create uh, a issuer first before creating this resource so let's create that first You have to uh, again. You have to uh, install uh, uh, Sat Manager uh, to create issuer resource. So this issuer is uh, used to create uh, certificates. Will be used to create certificates, and then uh, we we are going to deploy MS SQL Server as a cluster. So we have to uh, first uh, generate CS certificate using OpenSSL. So I have generated the certificate for uh, testing purpose now. And uh, let's create a secret 
using the certificate files we have just generated. So I'm creating a certificate named um, Cisco Server CA. Uh, so which will hold the CA certificates. So now we can see that secret is created. Um, now we are going to create an issuer uh, using the MS SQL Server CA secret that contains the CA certificate we have just created. So the YAML of the issuer is this. So in the spec section, spec CA, we just uh, provided the secret name that holds the CA certificate. So API version is cert manager io slash b1. So let's create this issuer first. Okay, I have applied and uh, the issuer is uh, ready. Now let's uh, create the availability group cluster. Yeah, so MS SQL Server uh, custom resource for ability group is uh, created and uh, QDB operator is provisioning this, uh, provisioning uh, this AZ cluster and created the necessary resources uh, for this and created pet set and creating ports and the services. Uh, here, MS SQL uh, Server AG is the primary service uh, which will be the primary port of the cluster and the secondary services uh, point to the secondary uh, replicas of this cluster, availability group cluster. And the uh, uh, internal uh, communication, the, this government headless service is created. And here, MS SQL Server AG auth is the uh, holds the authentication details for this uh, uh, availability group. Uh, replicas and uh, we have endpoint cert which actually uh, uh, holds the certificate will be, uh, that will be used in availability group uh, uh, group replicas uh, endpoints authentication and we have some uh, uh, database uh, uh, we have some uh, ability group replicas login uh, details and master key details which is uh, same for uh, all replicas in the availability group uh okay and the pvc uh, for each replica is created as well so database is in ready state let's, uh, let's access this database let's connect to the first pod we can see the logs as well uh so which replica is the primary uh QTB, uh provisions this uh uh, provisions this uh, cluster uh, also uh, created the availability group internally and uh, so some replica and one replica is primary and others is secondary now so everything is ready now let's see the logs you can see that uh, for the in the for the first port uh, the coordinator container which is responsible for the coordination of the availability group cluster. So, which is um, uh, in created uh, the availability group and others replica is joined in the availability group. So, for this pod, I can see that uh, first uh, there is no availability group replica. Uh, availability group is, uh, there is no availability group and then this pod uh, is first created and it is creating the availability group. So this pod is the primary replica. And for others, I see the others replica pod. You can see that others, others replica is joining to the created availability group. So So yeah, ability group found and uh, let's see. Yeah, so this replica also joined in the availability group 
uh, primary replica. So primary replica here, uh, the board zero, I'm just going to cover AJ zero. Now uh, let's uh, connect to the primary port and uh, see what are the databases is available there. Uh, to connect with the we have we have we need the authentication details. So here also I have not provided any custom authentication secret. So if to be operator created one for me. So let's see the authentication details. So password for this. Right. Okay, so I have connected with uh, for which is the primary port. So let's see the available databases. Yeah, so AJDB one and two. Uh, these two databases uh, we have uh, provided in the YAML. So as the availability group database. So this database is, uh, is created and added to the availability group. You can uh, let you can see that uh, this database is replicated uh, in other replicas as well. Let's connect with the secondary replicas. Let's see this database is created in the secondary replicas or not. Okay, so yeah, we can see that uh, we can see that database is available in all replicas. So because uh, uh, when a replica joins uh, as secondary, uh, the availability group database is uh, also created in that replicas as well. So every data every availability group. Replica uh, holds the same database, same databases. Okay, now uh, let's uh, insert some data. Uh, we can uh, we can uh, insert flight operation in uh, only in the primary replica. So let's uh, create. Uh, let's use AGDB one. So now let's create a uh, sample data table. and insert uh, some sample data. Okay, so two rows is inserted in the data table. Let's see. Yeah, so we can see that in our data table, two rows is inserted. Let's see this data is replicated in the secondary replicas. Use AZDB one. Yeah, we can see that uh, the inserted uh, rows are also replicated in the secondary replicas. Let's see and in the second secondary replicas as well. I have to first use AZDB one. Yeah, we can see that the replication is happening. Uh, so if if user uh, uh, can write on the primary replica, the secondary replica uh, uh, gets the data immediately. And you can read also from the secondary replicas. So these are readable secondary replicas. Now, uh, so our cluster is uh, working fine and replicating the data. Now let's uh, uh, assume a scenario where prim primary replica is uh, actually uh, somehow being down or something. So let's uh, uh, do that. Let's uh, let's manually delete the primary port and see uh, how KBB operator actually uh, manages these situations. Uh, 
I have deleted the primary port, which which was the as you as is zero. Now uh, we can see the logs of the second and third replicas. You can see that. Uh, This is AG one. Yeah. After joining, when the primary replica um, is deleted, then uh, then this replica uh, from this replica the leader election is uh, uh, started. So two elected as leader, and and you can see that uh, primary replica for this node is. Uh, was AZ zero, but after the leader election, the current leader is ID is three. That means the second second replica, uh, which is AZ two, is actually uh, elected as leader. So we, we can see that instance AZ zero AZ two running according to the role. Uh, so uh, which is the healthiest node and which is the primary node now. So primary configuration is done for AG2. So this pod is run, running as primary. So new elected primary is MSS code server AG2 replica. So yeah, we can see that uh, the database is in uh, was in critical phase, but uh, when the uh, old primary joins, uh, the cluster is again in ready state all the replicas are ready so all primary also now joined as a secondary so you can see uh, from the logs that yeah so current role for this pod is secondary so this uh, replica resume the data movement for this databases so this uh, az0 pod is now running as secondary so we can't uh, start we can't start uh, insert data from this port now because this is not the primary port let's yeah we have connected uh, use agdb1 okay so select all from data so these are the same data we have inserted earlier, but we can't insert uh, now because this pod is now secondary. Let's try to insert something. Yeah. So fail to update uh, database HDB1 because database is read only. So this is uh, secondary data now. So we have seen overall that this uh, the new pod is AG2. You can also uh, see the role in the pod. Yeah, so let's see the YAML of the third pod, AG2. And you can see that uh, pod index is two and uh, this port's role is now primary. So primary service is now connected to this port. Okay, let's some insert some data from the new primary. I have inserted uh, a third row. Yeah. Okay. Connection is lost. Okay. Let's connect to the database. Okay. We have connected uh, now. Use uh, AGTB1 as our database. Now insert new data and let's see this data is, is being replicated to the uh, secondary replica. So, so let's see the data from here. Yeah, the third row also uh, that the new inserted data, uh, the ID is three. So did the third row also replicated? And you can see the old primary, which is running as secondary now, also gets the data. So data, data replication is fine uh, after the failover. So 
this is how uh, the availability group cluster is managed in QDB. So you can uh, run availability group uh, uh, seamlessly here. Uh, if any replica is uh, uh, in is any or if any pod is being uh, deleted or something uh, crashes, uh, then uh, another replicas immediately uh, uh, from the secondary replicas a new primary will be elected and the uh, cluster will be uh, operational the uh, from the new primary as well as the existing secondary uh, the old primary uh, will join uh, so without the old primary uh, the cluster is again accessible uh, so old primary will join within uh, a few minutes okay so yeah, this is how you can uh, use uh, SQL Server Ability Group Cluster. Uh, uh, you can provision and manage uh, using KubeDB. Now let's see uh, the future plans uh, for this project. So we are working on uh, backup restore of SQL Server database and uh, monitoring using Prometheus and Grafana and the TLS for security so which will be available in our uh, upcoming releases uh, now uh, it's time for uh, question and answer sessions if you uh, have any questions regarding this project uh, you, you can ask us now Okay, I guess uh, uh, there is no questions for now. Uh, thanks everyone for joining this webinar.